Yeah. Heavy sigh. <laughs> you know, it wasn't that long ago that I posted a video reviewing the a Sony A6400 versus the A6500. And in that review, I was kind of lukewarm about it. I, I didn't see really any purpose. Well, let me rephrase that. If you were new to Sony, the Sony A6400 made perfect sense. Great camera. But if you already own the A6500, and maybe to a certain extent the A6300, why bother? That was before I saw a video, an in-depth review from somebody whose opinion I really, really respect. After having his hands on the uh, A6400 for quite some time, his opinion has made me <laughs> have second thoughts. So, it's time for a second look at the Sony A6400 with the help of Farouk from over at iFondo. By the way, I'm going to leave a link down below to his channel um, so you can check him out as well. And the many of the clips from this video are courtesy of Farouk. Do appreciate his allowing me to use these clips because, again, I haven't had the opportunity to actually use the camera myself. Let's find out why I just might have to be eating crow. Hi, I'm Arnie, and here we talk travel, all things travel related, and camera gear. And if you're into any of those three things, why don't you consider subscribing? Just click that big red subscribe button down below. Don't forget, click the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever we put up new content. And don't forget to check the show notes down below for even more details. Now, at first blush, you can be forgiven for thinking that these are identical cameras. But if you take a closer look, you will see some differences some more striking than others. They are both 24.2 megapixel cameras that look identical to the untrained eye. But in truth, we're here to look at the reasons why you would want to make a change, specifically from an A6500 to the A6400. And trust me, after you see this, you're gonna want to take this into serious <laughs> reconsideration it is packed with 4k 30 frames per second 100 megabits per second hdr 1080p 120 frames per second slow motion video 11 frames per second continuous shooting with autofocus and auto exposure now some of these refinements i was aware of from reading the literature but sometimes until you actually see you get your hands on it you really don't fully comprehend everything about it Hopefully, that's going to change. And I might have to reconsider my decision to keep the A6500 and replace it with the A6400. Also, A6400 has always on eye autofocus where you can select which eye you want A6400 to focus on. That always on auto eye focus blows me away. It's an amazing feature. I just can't get over that. Also, now it can track an object and keep it in focus all the time. And I have to tell you that it is very impressive. And that focus tracking? Did you see that? <laughs> it just, it locks on and it doesn't let go. It's truly remarkable. If you like, you can touch anywhere on the screen to focus to that point. Plus, it focuses in 0.02 seconds, which makes it world's fastest autofocusing camera. How about the touch focus? That's the fastest touch focus of any camera. Now, one of the primary complaints about the Sony a6500 is the battery life. It is truly abysmal. Anybody who's had one, will tell you that it just it doesn't last you have to carry around multiple batteries during the day to, to switch things out 
Interestingly enough, the A6400 uses the exact same battery, but gets remarkably better um, battery life. A6400 takes 410 photos compared to A6500's 350. Also, A6400 shoots 125 minute video, where A6500 shoots only 105 minute video. Another complaint often associated with the A6500 is the overheating issue. Now, personally, I've never had that problem. Um, typically, I don't shoot for long periods of time uh, at one time. Uh, it's typically shorter clips, so I've never experienced that, but others have. And that is another problem that has been solved in the A6400. When it comes to A6400, heat is not a problem. My A6500 overheated and shut down after 33 minutes and 23 seconds of recording 4K 30 frames per second video. When it did, it had 53% battery left, where at exact same moment, A6400 had 68% battery remaining. It took A6400 one hour and 23 seconds to overheat and shut down. Okay, now this next one is something that I have experienced and it's, it's my biggest complaint. And that's with the rear LCD display. When you're outside in the sunshine, you can't, you can't even see anything on that screen. It is really ridiculous. And that's another issue that the A6400 has taken care of. And it, uh, this is, could be the main reason why I'm seriously thinking about making the switch. That is a huge thing. Why don't we just listen to Farouk and see what he has to say. A6500 dims the screen when you switch to 4K video mode, which makes it impossible to see the screen while you're outside. A6400 doesn't. It even lets you keep the sunny brightness level, which makes it one of the best improvements on this camera. Now, I think it goes without saying that the thing that most people are excited about is having that flip up screen. When you're trying to do this kind of work with, you know, whether you're in an office like this setting or whether you're out and about someplace, you want to be able to frame your shot while being in front of the lens. So having that, that flip up lens is an incredibly valuable tool. One that would make purchasing the camera for some people like that's it. I've got to have that. The nice thing about that is that you don't need to go out and buy an additional monitor to mount on the camera. <laughs> Whoops, a little too late for some of us. Um, but now the thing that I mentioned in my uh, previous video that would keeping me from making the switch was the fact that there is no in-body image stabilization, in-body image stabilization, say that three times quickly, with the A6400. But I think you should take a look and a listen to Farouk and, uh, you know, make up your own mind. I, th this is what's kind of like the tipping point for me. A6400 does not have five axis in body image stabilization A6500 has, which is why this camera can be so much cheaper. So how bad is it compared to A6500? Both A6500 and A6400 have 10 to 18 f4 lens on them, which has optic image stabilization. And as you can see, it is so hard to tell the difference. Let's slow the footage down. I think as long as you have a lens that has optical steady shot, there won't be a noticeable difference between A6400 and A6500. Now, there are many other finer detailed points that uh, Farouk makes in his video. Uh, they don't 
necessarily apply to me, but so I didn't, I'm not going to mention them here, but you know, you can head over and, and check out his video if you really want to get into the nitty gritty. Uh, again, I'll leave the link to his, his channel and that video down below. Well, I don't know about you, but now I'm seriously rethinking here. Um, I can't afford both. I, I have to sell the A6500 to be able to get the A6400. Um, I already have an external monitor, so that issue's taken care of. Um, although that monitor does, does take up a lot of extra space and it requires more fiddling around. And it's kind of a pain. It would be nice to be able to just flip up the back and, and go. So I really am torn here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right. What are your thoughts now? Are you thinking about getting one? It's a tough decision, isn't it? Hey, if you like this kind of content, why don't you give us a thumbs up? Leave a comment. Subscribe. We do appreciate it. Hey, thanks for stopping by. It's appreciated. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.